So we are going to look at um, QuickBooks for hotel management. How to check rooms available, rooms that are occupied, room rates for guests. This is going to be um, some, somewhat unique for uh, those that want to learn how to use QuickBooks to manage their hotel. Yes, um, I understand that there are hotel management software out there that does uh, better that are able to help you track guest check-in, check-out, and all that. But um, at some point, uh, we got a call from a client who wanted to use QuickBooks to manage their hotel accounting, and at the same time, see how QuickBooks can also uh, serve at the front end to a very large extent. So, because most hotel management softwares, you actually find... Um, then do more of the front end sales, like um, how to book a room, um, how to pay. But um, you, most of them don't actually do the accounting part, where you're able to see trial balance, your balance sheet, financial report, banking. So even if there's a software out there that does that, I bet you they're actually very few. And if there are, it means um, you're going to cough out top dollars for that because it's going to be quite expensive. So here we. We'll, we want to discuss how I was able to uh, help a client, although the, 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 the hotel business is not like as large as a five star, whatever, but it's, it's a lean hotel, like a short let apartment uh, kind of thing where you are able to um, manage the front end in QuickBooks accounting software and are still able to process um, um, relevant reports that uh, will help you know how. The hotel is doing so in this video i will try as much as possible to help you understand um, how to sort of chart of account for hotel and then how to create room that's that's something unique you know the biggest challenge is setting up hotel for a client when it comes to use of quickbooks is uh, the rooms because system does not even provide for rooms available and if there is most of them are actually created as a service because that's like room service but the thing is if you create the room as a service how are you going to know the rooms that are available so one of the key uh, thing i'm going to do in this customization is to help you see how to check rooms that are available in case a guest comes in and say oh you want to book a room and you are still able to use the system to check rooms that are available and the ones that are occupied so i will tell you the trick i used to achieve that for a client and then how you can adopt that if it works for you but if it doesn't work for you you can as well set up the room as a service and then it's, it's quite straightforward so the major customization here will probably be how to reset up the room in such a way that we are able to check uh, rooms that are available, rooms that have been occupied, and when guest checks out, how are you also able to check uh, when rooms that are occupied becomes available? So that's um, one thing we're going to look at, which is where we'll create our room categories, and then we'll look at how to create your bank account, your POS, your credit card wallet for guest payment, and then how do you create a customer account and balance or working guests? You know, uh, for some hotels, you might probably have regular customers, probably corporate customers who always like to book for their uh, for their employees or probably for some of their uh, key staff or top management staff. And then we have um, how to create departments and categorize your hotel into room bookings, restaurants, bar, gym, spa, and dry cleaning services. So that's like different department of a hotel. Sometimes it's, it's important that you segment or categorize your hotel into different departments so, so that you're able to see what the profit and loss position of each of your hotel is. And then how do you track inventories in store for your hotel? Although uh, for the restaurant, I ha already have a video on how to uh, use QuickBooks for your restaurant business. So I, I don't have to go back to that part again so i will drop a link on how to watch the video on quickbooks for restaurants so which you can also use to run your hotel and then we have vendors and payable balances then how do you track direct cost of your hotel like uh, the room services uh, inventory purchases room maintenance and charge repairs and all that and then how do you create invoice for regular guest checking when a guest comes in and then 
you you've had previous transaction or previous relationship with that guest you know how do you create an invoice to track what the client is supposed to pay or the corporate client is supposed to pay and then how do you receive payment via debit card or direct transfer and then we have received payment from working customer this was a customers that come with occasionally or customers you may not even see they only come in once in a while so they are not like a regular guest and how do you generate receipts so we also look at how to record regular business expenses how do you post banking transactions like checks transfer funds use register on reconciliation then we move to your financial report how do you generate your income report your expense report purchase report inventory report your uh, profit or loss by hotel rooms or departments and then your balance sheet your cash flow and all the other reports you want to generate um, as long as hotel is as far as hotel is concerned so let's move to quickbooks uh, software to demonstrate uh this cost outline that i shared uh, with you so the first thing we want to uh look at is how do you create chart of accounts for the hotel chart of accounts still remains an important part of your setup so when you find yourself setting up an accounting software for the first time, the major thing, the first thing you need to do is to customize your chart of account because that's the backbone of your accounting software. That is exactly, that's the key feature that determines how financial reports are being generated. So when you do the right thing, system will most likely give you the best report. So if your chart of account is wrong, then your transaction posting will also be wrong and your report will not be correct. So pay attention to chart of account. Chart of account is an account that categorizes your transactions to income, expenses, assets, and liability. Everything you do in QuickBooks, the boiler, or in accounting software, they all depend on chart of account. And that chart of account is actually the feature that differentiates one industry from another. So for a hotel, you're going to be seeing something like food and beverage sales, gift shop vending sales, lodging sales. So lodging sales is like room booking. And then you have linen and lodging supplies. These are direct costs, merchant fees, purchase or retail item, advertising and promotion. So these are different areas. So you can add more income heads uh, for your hotel. Like I said, for the beverage and the food sales, gift and vending sales, you can find this on uh, QuickBooks for restaurants. So look at the description. I've dropped a link on how to use QuickBooks for your restaurant. So we pay more attention to the hotel itself, which is how to create the room, which will be taken to your lodging sales. So then we want to segment the hotel. Let's uh, categorize the hotel by department. So I'll go to edit, preferences, and then accounting, company preference, and class. So class is what you use to create departments. If you want to categorize or segmentize, uh, divide your business into different segments, you use class to do that. So we'll go back to list and then our class list. So our hotel is divided into different segments. The first one is um, room booking or lodging, depending on what you call it, and then we have the restaurant and bar section. Restaurant and bar. So you have the gym section, gym and spa section. So let's um, look at our course outline. We have restaurant and bar, gym and spa, then the dry cleaning service too. So you come here, you add your dry cleaning section so why are we adding this the reason is because we want to check we want to check the performance of each of these segments of each of these departments in our hotel so when you post transactions you are able to check your profit and loss by class so that automatically uh shows you what each department has generated and how much you have incurred in each department so that way you will know the top performing departments uh, in your hotel so that's why you need to do that so every time we create an invoice or record an expense or receive a payment we're able to track them to the class that that expenses is connected to so this is very important so uh we've done discussion of account create rooms uh, categories quantity available so this is the tricky part of this software how do you create rooms on the system like i said before if you go to list item list right here so it's easy for me to quickly create the room and call it service so for some people or some uh, consultants i see them create a room and say room booking service and then they will click 
um, bring it to logging sales and they will click OK. Now, this is not uh, bad. This is OK. If you go to room booking service, you can actually uh, use this to track all the revenue from, which is fine. That's the accounting part of the system. But we want to take it a step further to say, OK, um, we, don't know, we don't want to just record room booking service. Is it possible for us to see the rooms that are available? Is it possible to see the quantity of rooms available and also know the ones that have been occupied or the ones that are not occupied? So because of that, I'm not going to record this as a room booking service. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create the room as inventory. So you will see what I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to create the room as inventory. So for creating the room as inventory, I can always check the quantity of room available. You will, then, you will then ask a question. How are you going to create the room as inventory? Does it mean that, don't you think that whenever you sell, your inventory becomes negative? When you sell, it becomes negative. Wouldn't that distort your record? No. That's not what we're going to do. So look at the idea that I'm going to share with you right now. Now, let's assume that the hotel has 10 rooms. It has 10 rooms. So... We're going to come here, we'll create room 101. Now, before we even create the hotel as a room, first, we can even divide it into section. So let's assume that we have executive suites and then lodging sales. So you can even come here and add and categorize this income from executive suite. But let's continue with lodging sales and then I'll click OK. We add another one again called Silver Suite. So these are categories of room that we have. And then we can then come here and say Corporate Suites. So depending on how you categorize your hotel rooms by different sections, so that's how you're going to start this. So now you see that we have corporate suite, executing suite, and then silver suite. Note the type. I'm not using service. I'm using inventory parts. I'm using inventory parts. Why am I using inventory parts? I want to be able to check the quantity of rooms available. I want to be able to see the rooms available when it get, comes in. I can generate a report, and that report will show me the rooms that are available and the ones that are occupied. And I will tell you the trick that I use right here. And then I can come back to item, new. So inventory part again i can then say room 101 under corporate suites now because room 101 is only available one so if you look at most hotel room numbers you can see uh, a room a number repeated twice these numbers are only repeat uh, just once you can see a number so you can see room 101 twice you're not going to see room 102 twice. When there's room 101, there's only one room 101 in all the aspects of the hotel. If there's room 102, there's only one room 102 everywhere. So because of that, it means the quantity of room 101 will be one. It's as simple as that. And then this goes to lodging sales. Am I going to track costs? No, I'm not going to track costs. So I'll click OK. Now, what that tells us is that whenever the quantity of the room, whenever the room is available, you're going to see quantity as one. Whenever the room is not available, you're going to see quantity as zero. Just watch me as I do this setup uh, step by step. Then I'll click OK. Then we'll add room 102, which comes under the same corporate suite. And we only have 102 once. So you can't have 102 twice in all the hotels. So we come here, we click OK. So we've added this. You can see we have one and then we have one. So let's add executive suites. So here we have room 103, which comes under executive suites. And it's going to be one. So there is only one type of each of the rooms available. So I, that's, I use the numbering, numbering system. You can have 103 twice. And then I'll come here, room 104, under lodging sales, and there, which is the sub account of executive suites. And I have one. Then I'll click OK. I'll click OK. So 
um, I'm supposed to have imputed the, the selling price of each of the room. So if you have a fixed price for your room, you can impute it here. But if you don't have a fixed price, just leave it empty if price varies. So the next one is we're going to add the silver. So that will be room 105, which is under the silver suite. And then that's the one which is lodging sales and then we're going to add room 106 the sub account of silver and then the quantity is one and then the income is this you click ok now look at what i've done so far if we go to reports inventory reports Valuation summary. Now you can see right here we have room 101, 102. So you can see 1111. In total, we have six rooms. You can see right here we have six rooms two under corporate suite, two under executive, and two under silver suite. That's the first stage to adding the room. So we'll come back to this section later. So just follow me as we do this setup. So we've been able to add. Each, each room and then quantity the rate for guests is the selling price which i was supposed to have updated right here but if the rate is not fixed you can as well uh enter the rate when you're creating an invoice so let's move to the bank account and or credit card wallet for receiving payments so you go to list chart of account is what you're going to use to receive uh sorry to create the bank account so i'll come here i'll create the bank account right here and then let's say uh, we pay online, pay per wallet, or we pay with um, the direct transfer. So direct transfer to Bank of America. So how much do we have in Bank of America as a balance? I've, I've discussed this, so this, this shouldn't be a problem. How to add your bank account to the system? And you click OK so here you can as well come here and then bank so we have our payment wallets so this could be any payment wallet at all so you have the balance here if you don't have any balance you leave it so we've added our bank account to the system so the most important part of this banking setup is the account type which must be bank i've mentioned that several times when you are adding your bank account make sure you select the account type as bank so that any transaction that passes through the account name payment wallet or bank of america account will be treated as a banking transaction so we have the next one which is um, how do you create a customer account and balance of working customer now uh, for your for you as hotel or business owner or accountant, now you have two types of customers. You have your regular customers, and then you have your working customers who are your guests. So when you go to customer center right here, you can creating new customer, and then you call this guests customer. So or guests. Now these ones help you to track all transactions from customers that work in that are not regular, and then you can as well add another type of customer which is your corporate customer. So let's say we have a customer as uh, FedEx, a corporate, maybe they, they, are, uh, they are one of the regular customers that uses the hotel to uh, probably uh, get their staff um, accommodated when they come into work, whatever. So you can also add more corporate customers and say you work with Amazon and put that here incorporated. So these might be different types of customers that helps to book and you can also have individual names so you can also call me and say mr mike smith as maybe he's a regular customer too and if he has a previous balance before the setup you can impute right here now the previous balance before the setup means that before we deployed quickbooks this guy has already used our service but he's here to pay us so we can also track him as a receivable so that when you go to report Customers and receivable system will display the name of that customer and amount they owe. So let's move on to the next part. Um, create departments, categorize your hotel. We've done this. Inventories at store. 
Now, as a hotel, you have different inventories. So we can as well come here, item new. So we're going to call this inventory in store. Inventory in store. So you can move this to. So because you're not going to sell this, so you leave it as uncategorized. So your inventories in stores can be made up of different type of inventories. Maybe you have a uh, soul. So your inventory in store, you can create this as your soul. And then the quantity on hand you can enter 1,200. And this is measured in pieces. So you're going to enter this in pieces. Which is P. Click on finish. And then this will also go to uncategorized income. So with this, you can create different inventories. So sorry, this should be a sub account of inventories in store. So but the major focus of this video is how to sell your room as a hotel. So anything regarding inventory, I've discussed that under QuickBooks for restaurant business. So you can also refer to that. Now, we're not going to look at uh, vendors and payable. So who are your vendors? Your vendors are your service providers or your product suppliers. So you come to vendors and payable, you can add your vendor right here. So let's say you have a vendor called Soap Supplies. So these guys um, sell all the soap we need in the hotel. If there's any amount payable to this guy at the end of the period or before we deploy QuickBooks, you're going to put that amount here as a payable so that when you go to reports and you check your vendors and payable balance system automatically picks it as your payable balance so that's the basic part of the setup that you need to uh, look at then uh, the next one is the direct cost of the hotel so let's look at invoice before we start talking about cost how do you create invoice for guest check-in so this is where we are now going to be looking at how our customization will fit in for a hotel. First, when you go to reports, uh, you see inventory evaluation summary. While I'm calling this inventory evaluation summary, I can as well change this header to rooms available or available room for booking. So this will be a report that will be telling me rooms that are available for booking. How do you know the rooms that are available for booking when the on-hand quantity is one, 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 one? So that way, I'll be able to check whether this room is available or not. So if the room is not available, it's going to be zero. Now when it's available, it's going to be one. So I'll show you how to create an invoice to sell this room, then automatically it becomes zero. When this room becomes available, I'll show you how to record it so that the rooms become available again so to create your invoice for room booking you go to invoice so you want to invoice a corporate customer right now which customer are we invoicing fedex now you can then come back here and um, go to room 101 so we're giving fedex corporate suites room 101 how many one now, if they have different staff that are coming in to rent different room, so we're not going to say room 101, room 102. Every time you create an invoice, this has to be 111. Very important. So what's the cost of each room? We have 3,500 USD each. So this booking is connected to room booking. Then we have another one, which is 3,500. So it also connects to room booking. So this is how you create a room. Now you can see your tax. So if there's room for you to charge tax, you can as well charge tax right here. So let's say the tax is 7.5% for consumption tax. So you can then add maybe tax authority. Whatever the name of your tax official is in your region, you can as well enter the name of the system. Additional information, this is a tax agency. So you click OK, you click OK. So this will be um, consumption tax. Then you click OK. Or you can call it VAT. 
So you can call it consumption tax or VAT, so which is 7.5% of this value that will give you this amount. Now, the moment I save and close this, it means that these guys have automatically occupied that room and that room is no longer available again until the checkout. So how do we do that? Once I click save and close to record that, it becomes a receivable. So when I go to report customers and receivable, customer balance summary, you can see right here, FedEx is owing us 7,525. The moment I go to report inventory valuation summary, you can see right here, room 101, room 102 are no longer available because they've been booked. People are occupying them. Room 103 is available, that's why you have one. Room 104 is available, room 105 is available. Now, what if you charge them based on the number of days that they're going to stay? So how do you do that? You go back here. Now, assuming this is the cost of the room per day, this is the cost of the room per day. Now, they are going to stay in this room for five days. You are not going to enter the quantity as five. That would be wrong. If you enter quantity as five, it's going to distort your record on the system. The quantity you see here is the quantity of that room available. And you only have one of that room number. That's why this quantity must always be one. Now, the question is, how do we now record this invoice in such a way that if this client is going to stay for 10 days, the system would have that record? There are two ways to do that. It's either you calculate the cost of 10 days right here, which would be uh, 35,000, 35,000. Or you can have the system process that, uh, process the transaction automatically for 10 days. So I'll right click here and memorize this invoice. Then automate transaction entry. How often? I want to do this on a daily basis. Now, when is the next date, which is tomorrow? Eight. Number remaining. The one I've done so far is one. So I have nine remaining. That means system will automatically post this invoice for the next 10 days. That means as the day goes by and they are still occupying that room, system will be invoicing them automatically until the 10 days is completed. That means at the end of the 10 days, you should see 75,000 uh, USD. So you click on OK. So it means that every time, you come, every 24 hours, system will automate this invoice for the next day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, up to 10 days. If I go to the list and I check my memorized transaction list, it will display, you can see right here. So system automatically up, up, updates this. You can see frequency daily. You see auto next day, tomorrow. That is eight. So that means system will be automating this invoice. It will be creating this invoice for the next 10 days. So that way you are able to see invoices that actually reflect the number of days the client is staying while also retaining this as one another thing that you again you can do to make it easier for you is that we can as well come here cancel this automation now if i start creating um this invoice every day this quantity will reduce so another thing you can do again is to record the number of days so i think it's best to multiply the number of days the client is going to stay and invoice them for that day. You can see 35,000, 35,000. So this is also um, very, very good because if the system continues to invoice them, the unit continues to start increasing. We don't want to post the transaction in such a way that the quantity becomes negative. We want to post it and not affect, and not have the system affect the room quantity available. So I'll click on save and close. So let's go to our reports. Um, inventory reports. You see right here that inventory is zero, and this is zero. When your quantity, when the quantity on hand for your inventories or your rooms are zero, it means they are no longer available. So assume now that the client has used all the number of days, and the inventory is now available. How do you post that? Very straightforward. You go to inventory adjustments. Inventory adjustments. Now, when you adjust this inventory, you're going to adjust this inventory to your equity accounts now remember the system will not record any value right here so we are adjusting two rooms room 101 and room 102 you can see that the quantity on hand sorry i need to go back to check something the system is reporting negative figure let me know where the negative figure is coming from
okay this is yes quantity on hand is zero so let's go back to our inventory adjustments room inventory value inventory on hand so let's assume the guest checked out yes this guest checked out on the seventh so let's look at this again this yes and this so you can see right here the quantity on hand of each room is zero meaning that they were no longer available before that's why you see zero but now that the guest has checked out we will then come here and change this so now our new quantity will be one one you can see right here so now look at the way you should pay attention to you at the value the value is zero so what does that mean it tells us that the only change you are going to experience is the quantity on hand which is one one and it's not going to reflect on your book you can see so meaning that once i save this the rooms become available again and then i come here room booking and then I, once i click save and close the rooms become available so i can say bring rooms available for sale after guests check out at fedex or after best checkouts you can put the name of the company here so depending on the narration you think works for you so once i click on save and close automatically the quantity of rooms available will then become one why because they have checked out and then i have to adjust the room back to one meaning that it's now available for sale now sometimes you can only adjust this when it has been cleaned because it's not on, it's not immediately uh, the client checks out that you'll be required to adjust you have to do this when the room is not available meaning that when it, there's been proper cleanup i can come here and click save and close once i go to reports inventory inventory evaluation summary you can now see that the rooms are now available then if you go to report again profit and loss you can see here lodging sales which is the money we realize from the sale of the room to fedex staff so you can see how this work for a hotel let's try to sell another room to other guests so create invoice now we want to sell to mr smith and then every your quantity has to be one mr smith is trying to lodge his family and he's buying room 105 and room 106 so how many this is this thing multiply by the price bar so he's staying for 10 days and the price per uh this thing is uh ten thousand so total number of days ten thousand and this will be connected to room booking this will also be connected to room booking and then it's going to pay tax too on that amount <coughs> it's going to pay tax on that amount so everything is at one thousand five hundred which is for the duration of their stay the quantity on hand remains warm which is the quantity of room they want one of this room 105 one of one of 106 so the moment i click on save and close then room 105 and room 106 become unavailable so when i go to quantity on hand you will see right here that room 105 and 106 are no longer available which is why they are zero you can see right here why they are zero and then you can as well receive payments from mr smith and then let's say we are receiving payments for both the current one and then the previous balance that it owes and then we can then click on save and close now i can go back to home reports profit or loss you can see right here from large sale so if i click on all you can see right here so this is from previous balance that i owes before that's why you're saying this 12. now if you go back to report inventory on hand inventory valuation summary 
you can see right here, which is this. So if instead of showing inventory valuation summary, I can change this to header just like I did before to available rooms. Then I'll click on OK. And then I can memorize this to save it as a short cut. So when I check rooms that are available, I can also see that room 105 and 106 are no longer available again. Now, once he checks out and the rooms become available, what do you do? You go to inventory adjustment. We want to adjust this room back to their initial quantity. So I'll go to 105 and 106. You can see they are zero. Why are we using one? Because you only have one of that type. Then you adjust based on the room. Remember, the moment you begin to see total value of adjustment, then you are wrong. Total value of adjustment has to be zero so that it won't have any effect on your record. So what you are trying to do is to add or make that room available again. So that's what we have done. We click on OK. So if I go back to my reports, inventory reports, now you can see that the 105 and the 106 are now available. So you can see that this inventory is not going down to negative. Why? Because we are taking into account the, when they are available for, for sale or for booking or when they are not available for booking. So this is how to record um, sales of rooms for different, uh, to different clients. So this works very well when you use your room as inventory and then the quantity for each of this room is one because you can have two of 101 you can have two of 102 you can have two of 103 or whatever room that you have there's only one type or one identifier for each of the room which is why the quantity on hand has to be one so let's move on to the other type so how do you track direct cost of, of room maintenance room servicing or whatever so whenever you incur cost in each room so let's assume we don't want to pay for uh cleaning maybe we hired a, a, a cleaner or a, a an artisan to help us repair so i can as well select the bank bank of america and then we are getting someone let's say um ac cleaning limited so to clean the ac so you can quickly add this as a vendor so what service are they providing? Repair and maintenance. How much are we paying? We're paying 550. So what room is this repair and maintenance uh, taking place? We can come down here and then you select room. Okay, so this is connected to a room. So the customer, so if the customer was still in that room when it took place, you can as well select the customer, but if there is none, you can leave it. So this is able to help you track the amount you're spending. So on that memo, you can see being repair and maintenance of room 102, depending on the kind of room you're repairing, you're fixing, and then you can come to save and close. But then I go to reports, and then I select my profit or loss account. I am able to see the total, you can see repair and maintenance, 550 USD. So when you incur expenses, even purchase of inventories, you can also select the categories. That is why whenever you post a transaction, there's always room to map it to a class. Why? Because everything we are posting, they are reporting to a class. So if I go to report, I have profit and loss by class. You can see right here. So all the transaction we've posted so far, they are only connected to um, room booking. You can see that's why you have them right here. So if I'm also incurring expenses on other areas, maybe spa, uh, gym centers, cleaning services, make sure you select them on that class. So that's very important. If you're also invoicing a client for that services rendered. So when I go to invoice and I want to invoice a client, so if it's connected to other departments like gym, dry cleaning, you make sure you select that department. So that is also key when you are posting transactions to the system. We've talked about create invoice, receive payment. So how do you record regular expenses? We discussed that before. Make sure you track the kind of expenses you're making payment for. If it's a credit expenses, you use enter bill. Enter bills for credit expenses. If it's a cash expenses, you use write check. I've mentioned this in other videos. Then the banking section, we've also discussed that and the reports. Now the banking section, you are able to do fund transfer between bank 
do your reconciliation and then be able to see what your bank balance is. If I go to use register, I'm able to see all the summary of the transaction in the bank account. So, but most importantly, this whole setup is designed to help you see that you can actually track rooms available for sale and rooms that are occupied using QuickBooks. So it all depends on how you do your customization. Yes, this may not probably be 100%, but to a very large extent, you can still use it to manage a lean hotel and are able to see rooms available for sale and the ones that are not available for sale. When you approach a front-end officer and you say, I want to check rooms available for sale, you can quickly call up uh, the inventory report and then it will display the rooms that are available for sale. Since I've memorized them, I can also go to memorize reports and then click on rooms available for sale. System will display that right here. So when the room is available, it shows one. If it's not available, it shows zero. So that way you are able to see whether the room is available or not. Then under your financial reports, you're able to see your profit and loss by class, profit and loss year to date, your balance sheet, statement of cash flow. If I go to balance sheet, you can see you have your assets, you have your liability on the system. You can also generate statement of cash flow, which shows you how you are generating and using cash as a hotel. So I, I, I believe this to a very large extent is able to help you understand how to use this system to run your hotel business, both from the front end and then also able to manage the other end. So if you want to understand how you can use this software to manage your restaurant and bar section as a hotel go to the description i've dropped a video i've already shared a video on how to use people for restaurant and bar you can click to watch the video to help you see how to manage your hotel in total from the room section to the catering section to the bar and every other aspect of your hotel business if this is the first time you're watching this video kindly hit the subscription button and turn on the notification bell and if you have a hotel or you manage a hotel and you're looking for a way we can help you customize this software to work for your hotel you can as well share um uh, your question in our you can also use the comment section or you can connect with us go to this comment section or the, our description you will see um a link to access our um, email address or a link to access our website and then try as much as possible to reach out to us we'll be glad to receive your queries and then see how we can help 